know? I said, you know, like, because you're either one of, you're either one of two types of persons. Of two types of persons, of two types of individuals. And that is one that believes in destiny. And one that doesn't believe one way or the next. Or uh, doesn't take a stance, and, you know, is indifferent. Either, do, either you do or you don't, basically. And it's a funny thing about that. You know, that's a funny topic because it's like you want to say yes just to be positive, just to be optimistic as well as, you know, be uh, safe, <laughs> adventurous, you know. But a part of you still realizes that it doesn't really matter unless, I mean, it doesn't actually matter. And I mean, it, it, because it cannot matter, rather, you know, and so at least to that extent, it, it doesn't matter because it cannot matter. At least for you, uh, consciously, you know, just in a direct acknowledgement of it. And that's also another funny topic because really, that's all relative and that's kind of like contingent upon how you how you look at it, you know. And who's to say where it does or where it doesn't or how it isn't. Because everything is still happening. This is all still happening. You know? So that's why you have to say, you know, just like our, our hearts are, you know, our, our spirits wants to be able to respond to that as, yes, of course. Why wouldn't I? I mean, I, why not, basically? You know, the question's not why, but why not, really? The better question is why not? Right? It'd be a lot more shaping than just... There's many why. There are many why. There's always another why to the why. You know, um, but why not? It's like it's like the X. <laughs> you know, it's like a you know you can you can mark it off with the Y. It's like okay, that changes. You know, I mean, and the why not change too. However, they usually incorporate a why with them as to a why that isn't as opposed to a why that is so you got one that's changing that isn't that still isn't another another why that's that, that's changing that is is, an, is another why to, to count along with one that you might have already counted and a why not is it's just another subtraction so that kind of even you know dif- it helps to differentiate as well as define and refine better the why's that's what I'm saying. And so when it comes to destiny and being the type of person that either believes in destiny or fate uh, or not, um, how would you be able to prove it? What's the, you know, what is the proof? Me, I, I, I am presenting, I'm proposing that it is, of course, your intuition. You know, it's like something you can feel. You can feel it's like it just has a different type of energy, different like signature sort of essence. Like you have things that, you know, you have different interests in your life. You have preferences and um, style. You know, you got, you know what I'm saying? You be having a... Um, you know, everybody got their own like way about them. You know, and, and they got they got what makes them them, and what does it for them. Even if they haven't discovered all of those things, or been able to, you know, uncover those things, or been able to um, experience or encounter the full list or full you know range of all of what they would say they can pinpoint as to what does it for them because of course that's always changing right or developing and it's expensive as well as extensive so it's like it takes your continued motion and continued activity so as to be able to expose that to be able to identify with that range you know with the components as well as the the numericals, you know what I mean? The, 
the compartmentalized, categoried um, arrangement. You know, uh, my thought though was about uh, tension and anger and fear and where how fear come in you know because it's like to think is really to remember for what when it comes to memory and they say ignorance is bliss you know so it's like really when you when you kind of just kind of sit with that or rather you can kind of look at it as if like for instance when it comes to bliss and bliss being like this attaining this this goal to attain this this destination basically um but it's also a decision if you get this destination from decisions and you get direction from destination bliss is is all of these things bliss is a direction Bliss is a decision. Bliss is a destination. Yeah, and then some. Uh, it's like, uh, you know how they say smiling on the inside? I was reading something about something about this just now about uh, basically like the nerves and I was beginning to read something and I wanted to, I sort of got a bit apprehensive and that's what made me think of apprehension actually. And that's the term next to fear, next to anger and tension is apprehension. Because really all there is is bliss. All there is is bliss. It's That is the, the maximum, that is the premium, that is the initial state of being. That is the primary stage of all energy returns and is is reflected through through bliss and you get to a state of peace that's bliss you know freedom enlightenment is bliss bro right to where now even when in even in any emotion that you can conjure up or that you can pinpoint as to the the energy the extreme propensity or, or vibration any emotion that you can pinpoint or, or or identify as to being most prominent in your frequency in your vibration or as the, your vibration like what is your what is your vibration exactly? Is it the rate of which your thoughts are moving? Hmm. Perhaps a lower vibration, which is a slower vibration of thought activity, of course, slows down your your memory to where now you can remember better. Because what is it that that scars you? That makes you remember when you are blissful, your mind is not set on any particular thought is the point I'm saying you know what I mean so it's like for you to remember it, you, you usually have a, a reason that you're remembering something you know what I mean it's usually connected to something going on something that has happened that you are thinking about something that will happen that you are um thinking about that you are foreseeing you know that you are expecting that you are anticipating that you are anti sip 18 okay anti sipa shayan okay anticipating and that's really what fear is this hesitation I was speaking with my other climate change brethren he, I, we were talking about fear. We weren't talking about fear. We were speaking on a bunch of stuff, actually. Just really magnificence and just intellectualism. Intellectualism as well as uh, hip-hop. And 
and awakening and realization as well as uh you know expression and and communication but one thing we had, we were actually like kind of considering was about fear and i said to him you know fear is really i mean you know fear is is healthy because it opens up the door for discernment it's like you want something to go the best way you nobody wants problems <laughs> But we get to a point where the fear never really dissolves or never really um, dissipates into the more minuter areas that it was that it was created for that would that it uh, appeared for in, in the first place that that hesitation that apprehension that anticipation we get to a point where we get to get into this status or this stasis, this static sort of like stuckness toward the fear, which is good because it opens the door to discernment. That fear doesn't dissipate into the, the different minuter areas of which, of course, it appeared for and to, to begin with. Back to a baby, like a baby is fearless until it learns pain and and it remembers that pain you know that's why they say love is pain because love feels good in that it is strong it is, it is a strong experience you know even heartbreak even people are sentimental about heartbreak <laughs> you know what I mean people romanticize heartbreak you know when that's a deep pain like that's that's a lot of times a pain deeper than physical pain can be you know because you you have a threshold for pain like you only feel so much pain before you fucking pass out heartbreak just gets crazier and crazier you know it, it kind of stays with you like you know what I mean that one that, that pain is over is over and the only thing that's going to remind you of it or, or, or keep it with you, keep physical pain with you is like, you know, an injury, you know, and that's basically what I'm saying. Like memory is an injury, you know, to, to bliss, basically, you know, um, but it's it also could be likely to like a tattoo when it comes to love and good memory because really there's no such thing as like everything is bliss anyway so basically it's like it's not like it's bad I mean it just has its function it's has its it's has its purpose it's like fear has its purpose but really fear it's not even the best word for it because it's like it's really just hesitation it's you thinking twice about something you uh, allowing yourself to second guess something, and that's—I mean, that's not necessarily, not necessarily fear, but like in the in the sense of fear of what I'm speaking about, that's how fear starts. Is apprehension, is hesitation, as to your just certainty and assertiveness, you know, and, you know, um, cowardliness. Really, you know, you got courage, you got confidence, and you got cowardliness and insecurity right so what's the difference where did the fear come in you know? uh, it's just like a, it's, it's a training of your mind of your of your memory basically to, set, to that kind of stops you in your tracks that, uh, that it's like a warning to you it's like hes hesitation and it's like as far as like society and just like your dealings with, with, with people in life there's there's pain everywhere you know if if love is pain then and life is love then then living um living it can scar you really like life can scar you and it's like also i said uh living i mean the truth you know, they say the truth hurts basically you know the truth is ugly 
You know, and what's ugly other than a scar? You know what I mean? Some <laughs> if person is born this particular way, you can't call them ugly. You know what I mean? If they don't happen to be cute or whatever, they ain't necessarily ugly. It is not the most, you know, physically attractive person. <laughs> but to call them ugly is really more ugly than they could even be, than, than you can find them to be. It's to call them ugly. If they got a big ass scar on their face, you're like, damn, that's an ugly ass scar. Or, you know, you know what I mean. I would never call nobody ugly, but I'm not that type of person that's gonna say she ugly. Or that nigga ugly. I mean, unless I'm clowning them. <laughs> unless we shooting, you know, we shooting shots at her, like, you know what I mean? We roasting my G, roasting the nigga, and the nigga just, we just going back and forth, like, this could be one of the homies, and he, he could be a fucking professional, you know, cosmetic model. But, you know, I'm gonna call her ugly just to be, you know, just for fun, just for chops. As far as, though, truth, and the truth being ugly, and, and the truth hurting, it hurts because the truth is something that you can't help but have to return to in your memory. And a lot of times, being that it is the truth, you're going to, those are the points of reference. Those are your coordinates right there, the different areas of truth you've been able to confirm in your life. And a lot of times, <laughs> to confirm them in your life, it attaches it to some sort of trauma. You live? It's like... And you learn. For real, it does. Like, you got to think about what's the most happiest moments of your life. You know what I mean? We have we have a family, they die. You feel me? We get married, shit, nigga. We get our heart broke. You know what I'm saying? These are the happiest moments of life. So, like, it's all about your perspective. Like, at the same time, too. Like, those moments are, you wouldn't treat, are, you know, are priceless moments. No matter what does end up happening. That very instance, that very blissful blissful activity experience stretches stretches beyond time stretches beyond when you know what I mean that's really all memory is other than I mean it's really that's that's bliss in itself now memory is your reconnection to the bliss Right, and that connection can either be a jagged connection, or it can be like a smooth sort of just like a fusion type of union, you know. And it, and and that comes from how you are revisiting the bliss, how you're re recollecting it, basically recollection, right? To your best recollection, you know. Even in imagining, we still remember. You know, because your brain is going to display to you a composition, uh, an array, a uh, orchestra sort of mural, you know, a, a freaking, you know what I mean? An image, fucking, and your brain is going to display to you an experience, a fantastic experience based on, you know, based on an in reference to what you've lived, which you've exposed yourself to, which you've been exposed to, whether you can directly remember it or not, you're, you experienced it, and so it's tattooed on your bliss, but sometimes we get drunk tattoos, and we don't even, and if we don't get that tattoo in a spot that's obviously visible we may not notice that tattoo for years <laughs> we go we get drunk enough um uh, unconscious enough distracted enough um you know just you know altered enough basically consciously altered enough we can end up with a tattoo on our armpit that we don't ever fucking notice like, you know what I'm saying? We'd be working out somewhere, lifting some dumbbells. Nigga, what the fuck? Is that a ball sack, nigga, on your, on your armpit? Nigga, what the hell is, hey, man, hell is wrong with you, man? Damn, dog, you know I had that tattoo right there, homie. 
No, I ain't a ball sack, bro. That's nigga. This is no, nigga. These no, no, no. You know, nope, no, it, uh, shit, no, nigga. No, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it could be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the tattoo that you can got while you didn't realize that you was even conscious while you, you know what I mean? Drunk as, you know what I mean? Whatever. Like, and uh, you, like a lot of times we go through things when we're children. We see things and it makes an impact on us. And that's usually the most vivid because it's the first time seeing it, right? You know, when you see, you know, nakedness for the first time or you see, you know, a kaleidoscope for the first time or you see just something extremely uh, graphic, whether it be positive or negative, it's just impactful on you. And our brain is still young and we aren't as scarred so much until we get scarred enough to where now it fucking opens up all these memories. And from that point is when we start to then categorize our experiences into different memories, basically. And the imagination is how you basically access these compartmentalized memories that you've consciously compartmentalized, but we have memories. Like those tattoos that we got while we were drunk that we don't even know we have. And they pop up as you explore explore more experiences and have more reference so as to, uh, you know, diversify and to basically flavor, to color your memory, really, honestly, or your imagination, right? Which draws from your memory. Um, and your intuition draws from your imagination or rather I don't know anyway as far as imagination though and memory memory is uh always there like, memory is also premonition as well you know it's, it's memory is timeless and that's the whole thing like we're I think we're reaching back we're, we're and we're using that connection we're using um that configuration in in only one direction you know and I know this to be true and it's like how do I know how do you know what is bliss or rather you can like what was I saying has a particular signature I was saying it has a particular signature right as far as what um what has a particular particular signature as if for you like uh dang I forgot the, I was thinking about that but as far as like um you know pr- uh, premonition and, and divining and, and, and memory and imagining rather imagination and premonition basically and memory you know imagination I guess you would be I would I would say is the center point between premonition and memory is the imagination imagination is the vehicle to, in, in either of those directions basically but consciousness is of course the road hmm or the road, you know, the roads to be taken towards premonition or or memory. So imagine, imagine mem- remembering something that you haven't yet to have consciously experienced. However, if if there is a such thing as infinity and eternity, that means that it has no beginning or end. It is all the now, and this is not nothing that. You you know, it takes necessarily thinking all about. However, it would be uh, backwards to be thinking the opposite (laughs) and always subconsciously focused on the limit of time or the the, uh, you know, the encapsulated structure that is lack or that is finitude or you could say it's really this um possible possibility basically you know like what do you what is to say what is possible other than what has already been possible or as we remember it or have categorized as a possibility you know at one point it wasn't possible to, to fly in the air on an airplane 
It wasn't even possible, yo. However, it was possible. We just wasn't focused on that possibility just yet. For whatever reason. Development and technology led to a new possibility. So, as far as remembering the future, man, I believe it's very possible. I know within my heart because, you know, I have not denied it. I have not allowed myself to accept the denial of it. I won't fantastically as well as delusionally overemphasize it, and, you know, in my, you know, in my, in my dealings or expectations. However, the, the more I'm you know, like moving away from at least mastering my appreciation and understanding of that possibility, the more impossible and less possible I'm making it, you know, for me. It's no reason why I wouldn't be able to at least incorporate that notion, that, you know, uh, focus in whatever else I am accepting as possible. Even in accepting what is possible, you're accepting that it is only temporarily possible until it becomes impossible or temporarily impossible until it becomes possible. But the flip side reverse of that is not always so celebrated because, of course, why? Because love is pain and the truth hurts is why. So when it is possible, it reminds you of how necessary it may or may may not be and it being necessary makes it now important and it being important means that it's serious that it's it's unavoidable it's inevitable and so it's like everything connected to it is is absolute until you change it or it changes or both you feel me so it's like yeah that's why you know this whole virtual reality world is so appealing because it's like ah at the end of the day I can just sit sit in my room and, and be hesitant you know be apprehensive you know and anticipate <laughs> You feel me? Stay in this, stay in this fear and not let it dissipate because once it does, then it's going to reveal and uncover the different areas which the fear appeared for to begin with. And that in, in this case, it appeared to, to catch you before you made the decision as to remembering the future or the past. Because even in remembering the, the, the past, it's, there's an element of remembering the future because now you're, you're time stamping a particular event, a particular experience, right? Right? Like if you were to say, say, okay, okay, I'm thinking about what happened yesterday. Um, You're thinking about what happened yesterday, today. However, the thought you're having about it, the memory you're having today, about what happened just yesterday is still a memory tomorrow. What happened, happened the day before yesterday, but you thought about it and it became a fucking memory yesterday, right? So two weeks from now, two weeks from now, you still gonna be, well, you know what I mean? What, what determines if you still gonna be thinking about that memory? Hmm. Are you gonna be fucking mad? You gonna be upset about it and it's gonna, you just gonna, you gonna be able to not forget it? Right? Because if, if it's making you happy, then how long are you gonna stay happy? Are you going to stay happy longer than you're going to stay mad about the same memory? Hmm, that's interesting. That's something absolutely to consider. I would imagine, or in my experience, I found to where being that you're not thinking about how happy you are, 
as to what you asked to words, you cannot ignore how angry you happen to be. Um, for that reason alone, you're going to be thinking about something that makes you angry longer or stronger than you would something that makes you happy. But it's the same thing anyway. You feel me? It's just that agitation. It's that frustration. It's that hesitation. It's that anticipation. Right? Because whatever is making you angry is just taken away from what you would rather be feeling. Which would be the happiness, yes? But even when you're happy, you're feeling the happiness, you're not thinking about that. Right? Because everything is bliss, yes? Of course, yes. And bliss is ignorance, yes? To ignore. Well, no, it's really just not focused on any one particular part because it's all together, yes. You feel me? It's the same thing that make you happy, make you sad, and sometimes the same thing make you sad, make you happy. It's all about the time that passes, the time it takes, the time involved and the time you spend focusing on it. You know, it's like we go into meditation, yes? They say, forget the memories or the thoughts of the past or the future. It's all the memory though, because it is the memory that connects you to you consciously um, fucking like suspending that, you know, brain sort of pocket, nigga, that's, you know what I mean, that's a little, that window, basically, you know what I mean, it's like you popping a window open, as opposed to just like, you know, peering out of the window, you opening the window for some, for a, a, a crisp draft, you know, or to ventilate, basically, for ventilation, you opening the window, you know what I mean, and the window either is sturdy or it's rickety, slash loose, slash, you know what I mean, raggedy. And you might have to pop that window open. What's going to pop it open? Trauma. Somebody wanting, them, wanting you to remember, nigga, so that you don't forget what that memory is connected to, you know, so whatever type of situation. And that's really be the situation when it comes to other people and just like where that fear or rather that anger, that agitation comes in. It's like between people, we have tension between our, our um, relationships. It's a, it's a source of some sort of tension or friction, always, even in good ways, you know, it's uh, exciting in itself. To excite is to agitate, you know what I mean? A negative con connotation of excitement is agitation. However, there, that's another example of, you know, how term can be interchangeable, you know? Like, if you were creative enough, you can describe how something is agitating to you that it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's really an activation either way. Agitation and, and excitement is still activation. Activation of your conscious, um, conscious, uh, you know, your consciousness, activation of your consciousness, as well as your conscious awareness of a particular emotion, a particular um, perspective. A particular opinion about some your particular perspective your emotion about it your idea of it how you interpret it and the many ways it can be interpreted in relation to the versatility of your associative process your associative qualities of how you even can consider things like, how many lenses can you look through at once? You know, uh, you know uh, how you know how advanced is your lens, or are your lenses? You know, can you have a lens that incorporates all lens, all all possible lenses? Well, that's how. That's what I'm saying is bliss. You know, and bliss can be looked at as. Um, grief at its lowest, at its lowest level, literally. 
You know what I'm saying? Because really, like, all life is bliss. All consciousness itself is bliss. You know, because the highest consciousness is what? Bliss, yeah? So, if it's all an emanation, all an emanation, starting with the most powerful and then, of course, dissipating into slower frequencies, then it's just a different form of the same energy in in a different sort of pattern, basically. You know what I mean? And that's how you really attribute it. That's how you can piece, piece it back together. That's how you can connect, make the connections. That's how you can identify with the nature of bliss, the nature of consciousness, and and all the different outlooks that you that 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 come up in life it's w- between situations, because you can be mad about something, but then it's like you don't want to stay mad, so then you gotta allow it to to be comical, you know, allow it to be less drastic as it might have been initially been. What made you mad doesn't change. It's just you change your feeling about it, change your approach to it, change how much you allow it to upset you. For then, because then like you might even try to like ignore it and then it come back and it make you even matter because it still ain't changed. But then it's just like it takes your conscious decision to to stay there, to stay stuck there. You know what I mean? That's that particular fear, but it's only there so as to help nav- help you navigate. Yeah.